So within the features menu on this vehicle, you're gonna have driver's assistance, you'll have zone lighting, and you'll have your owner's manual. So the owner's manual will update as the vehicle updates. So while you have this vehicle set up on your Wi-Fi at your home and it's receiving updates, you may receive new driving modes, you may receive new backsplashes. The owner's manual will update with those changes. So if you ever have any questions that we're not answering for you here on these videos, you can certainly click on the owner's manual and do a quick search. So the other icon we have within the feature setting is gonna be zone lighting. Now this feature is gonna be available on your Ford Pass Connect. So you will be able to spot your vehicle while it is super far away from you in the dark. Let's say you're out there rock crawling, you're out there canoeing, you're doing uh, some serious outdoor adventuring. You parked your car somewhere where you can't find it uh, and it's too far for an audible noise to be heard. You can go into the zone lighting so long as you have your phone on you. You can turn it on and you can turn on every white light that your vehicle has, including the high beams, reverse lights, and the side mirror lights. So that'll allow you to visibly see that glowing star in the distance, right? So you can do it from there. You can also do it from here in the screen. So what that'll allow you to do is use this mode for several different things. If I'm out there camping and I'm trying to put stakes into the ground, I can flood the zone with lighting so I can see everything that's going on around the vehicle and in the vicinity in which I'm trying to set up my campsite. Or if you're driving off road and you just need to add more light while you're doing those aggressive trails and you just simply can't see enough, uh, enough around the vehicle, you can simply turn on all the zone lighting and you can see front, back and side to side 360 degrees around the vehicle. So moving on from zone lighting within the features tab, we have driver's assistance. So this is part of Ford Copilot's 360. This particular vehicle has the adaptive cruise control, but it is not with lane centering technology. That's something that you have to have the Lux package to achieve. It does have lane keeping, but not lane centering. Uh, so adaptive cruise control in here, we have the lane keeping system, which is gonna make sure that we maintain our lanes while driving on the highway. If we lean outside of our lane, the vehicle will give us a two pound pull on the steering wheel and pull us back in. Now, if you're not a person that likes to use blinkers, which I hope you are, uh, and you're just trying to change lanes, you will feel this slightly pull against you as you're trying to make that lane change without a blinker. It's only a two pound pull so if you had to, in a pinch, make an aggressive maneuver as someone's aggressively braking in front of you just to avoid an obstacle, it's not gonna stop you from making that lane change. You can set the mode up to alert, alert and aid, and or just aid. So what those modes do is, while I'm in the alert mode, it'll actually vibrate the steering wheel. While I'm in the aid mode, it'll only push the steering wheel to direct me back into my lane. And then if I do alert and aid, it'll not only vibrate the steering wheel, but it'll also pull me back into my lane. Now it is not an aggressive pull back into the lane. It's very slightly will pull you back into your lane. So it's not a scary task that's happening. And in fact, you'll feel it. It's very, very light. Like I said before, about two pound pull. Can you fight it? Absolutely. If you wanna make that lane change, you can fight it while this is on. It's not hard to overcome. And once it notices that you are trying to indeed change lanes, it will allow you, it'll release the steering wheel and allow that action to take place. Now you've got lane keeping intensities. So in clicking in this, you have low, normal, and high. Now Ford presets this to the normal setting. Now that's where I like to keep mine, but if you really want it to be on low, you can certainly do that or you can have it on high if you'd like to. Moving on from the lane keeping system, we have pre-collision assist. Now this particular one is gonna have pre-collision assist with automatic braking, and I like to turn on the distance indicator. That's gonna show the distance of me and the vehicle in front of me at all times. And it's gonna be showing it up here on the main instrument cluster, which I'll show you a little bit later. We've got automatic emergency braking on, so in the case that I don't brake as I'm a distracted driver, 
the car will brake for itself, avoiding that accident, given the opportunity. In addition to this automatic braking, should I not have the ability to stop in time, I'm following way too closely to a person, I can use this evasive steering. And what that's showing you is that it is going to take a turn around that vehicle, being that I'm following too close, I don't have the ability to stop before hitting this vehicle. As long as there's no vehicle to the left or right lane, the vehicle, if enabled, will evasively steer around that driver in front of you, keeping you and your family safe within the vehicle. Now, it should be noted that it will not steer to the right in this image if this is a solid white line, the shoulder. It will not go over the shoulder. It does not know how large the shoulder is. So being that said, it could be 10 feet of a shoulder in width, or it could be a guardrail. So what Ford's done is they've completely eliminated for the vehicle to take evasive steering measures outside of the shoulder. Only on your dashed lines will it take evasive steering. All right, so moving on down, we have the alert sensitivity. Now this one is set to normal and that's the way it comes from Ford. I personally like to keep mine on normal as well, but you can change it to low. If you're more of an aggressive driver or if you feel like your sensors, because sometimes it is the sensors themselves where they're just too sensitive and they're seeing that a car is closer than it really is and it starts beeping at you saying, hey, you're about to get into an accident you can set it to low. And I've seen those situations happen from time to time, even on my own vehicle. So I've placed it on low from time to time, but normal is where it comes from Ford. They want you to keep it minimum of at least a two car gap distance. If you are a little bit more on the worrisome side versus other drivers on the road, you can set it to high and it'll sort of alert you at a, at a three car gap distance. So a pretty good distance. But if you're more of that conservative, I wanna be safe out here, we can go ahead and set that setting to high. For now, I'm gonna leave this one at medium because that is a safe distance for the vehicle to completely brake in order to avoid an accident. Moving on out of the pre-collision assist, we've got the reverse cameras and we can set those up on a delay. There's not a whole lot of options within this section. So it's just showing you that we can do advanced parking. If we don't want the lines there, we can turn that off. So you can set your vehicle up to do camera delay, but in an automatic vehicle, that doesn't make too much sense unless you want to. In a manual vehicle, that makes a lot more sense. I'm the type of person, and some of you out there may be the same, whereas I'm in reverse gear and I've got my foot releasing from the clutch, I like to pop it into neutral and allow it to roll back. Well, in the Ford vehicles, if you do that, it'll actually kick off the rear camera, which can be pretty frustrating for us sometimes. So what you can do is click it on camera delay. And then once you disengage that reverse gear on your manual transmission, it'll keep the camera on for a few more seconds just till you get to your final position and then apply the e-brake. Moving on out of that system there because there's just not a lot in there. Uh, you've got your blind spot monitoring system. That's pretty self-explanatory. As someone's in your blind spot of the vehicle, it's not gonna make an audible sound. It's gonna show you a car in the corner of your mirrors here. It's gonna light up in yellow and it'll flash at you as someone's approaching or as you're passing somebody, it's gonna allow you to know that someone's there not to get over. Ford doesn't make an audible sound on the blind spot monitoring system because they don't wanna make a nervous or distracted driver by making an audible sound and scare them into making uh, an incorrect maneuver while driving. This is probably one of my favorite things is cross traffic alert. So as I'm backing out of a position, whether it's a pedestrian, bicyclist, uh, motorcyclist, car or truck, as I'm backing my vehicle out, if some object is moving within my path, it'll automatically apply the e-brake, but first it'll warn me before doing so. So this is an absolute essential feature to have in modern day cars. I love this feature so much. It's actually accidentally worked for me here at the dealership on several occasions. So I can speak for firsthand that cross traffic alert works very, very well. And then in case you're a fatigued driver and you're using that lane keeping assistance and you've leaned outside of your lane too many times, 
it's gonna be a notification that shows up that, hey, you should probably stop and get some coffee or at least take a rest for the night before continuing any more travels because you've left your lane too many times and the Ford is letting you know, hey, you're kind of swerving on the road. Maybe we need to take a break. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the feature settings and that's it for this infotainment system outside of having the ability to throw screens around, which is actually a pretty cool feature. So I can, as you just seen, I've thrown this music over to the other side in full screen size. I can also throw that navigation system over there as well. And I last had it set to full screen. Now I'm gonna close that thing down. You've also got the window tab down there and you can float through different features here. So you can float through your phone, you can float through some of your trips. So on this one, it's gonna show how long I've been on a trip, how many miles per gallon I've made on the trip and how many miles to empty. Now this is a brand new car, so it hasn't been driven very far. You can use these little arrows down here if you don't feel like swiping, but I particularly like to swipe. So I'm gonna swipe, swipe it up. I've got my fuel economy and you've got pitch and roll status on this. Now, not all of these features are gonna be on F-150s or Raptors. They're model exclusive, such as pitch and roll. As you see here, it's a classic Bronco showing up there in the background. So pitch and roll is exclusive to the Bronco. Moving on down, we've got off-road status. Now, these all these menus that I'm showing you here, I can actually access over here on the main screen on the instrument cluster. So I will be showing you that instrument cluster here in just a moment. And the zone lighting, we can adjust from there as well. So audio is a great one to have on. It can be any source that you'd like to have posted up there. You can post that up there and use your regular navigation system or your CarPlay system at the same time. 